Hello everyone, today we're working on a 2018 Mercedes-Benz Sprinter 3500. It's a, a, a mobile home or motor home. And we're going to be doing a transmission fluid change and, and flush on this uh, vehicle. Uh, the fluid we'll be using today will be the AMSOIL Chemical Engineered Synthetic. It's the signature series. Uh, it's uh, ATL is the uh, stock number for it. Here's a spec sheet on the AMSOIL Synthetic ATF, the signature series. And uh, first thing I want to I show you here is there's two different ones here listed on this page. One is this uh, red one is the older formulation uh, multi-vehicle synthetic ATF and uh, then the blue bag here this one right here is uh, it's a low viscosity fuel efficient synthetic ATF and that's what most of your newer transmissions are going to call for. Um, the thing about this uh, chemical engineering synthetic is it uh, reduces the operating temperature of your transmission by 20 to 50 degrees over petroleum based fluids and uh, the, the life of the fluid is significantly longer as well. As you uh, drop that temperature out of that transmission, all the soft parts inside last a whole lot longer. All the seals, uh, all the piston seal rings, um, as you drop the heat by 20 to 50 degrees, the life of those soft components goes up significantly and that extends your transmission life. And as an example, we have a, uh, a taxi fleet, severe service taxi fleet field, uh, field trial this was in Las Vegas. Um, what they did is they run the AMSOIL for 180,000 miles in the transmission and uh, they selected the transmission to, to tear apart and see how everything looked. And what you're, sh you're seeing here is the synthetic AMSOIL, um, even after 180,000 miles, contained 83% of its original oxidation inhibitors. And uh, you can see the, the valve body here looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, the clutches, again, they're clean, uh, very little signs of wear on them. Uh, very good condition. Um, this is the kind of protection in the desert heat of Las Vegas that the AMSOIL provides. So one of the best ways to extend the life of your transmission is through the use of that AMSOIL Signature Series ATF. As we go down to this next sheet here, it gives you all the specifications, all the uh, ASTM specifications here on the two, two products. The ATF is the older formulation, the ATL is the low viscosity right here. So as we go to the specifications, Here's the applications for the older ATF, and this is just part of them. The, other, the rest of it's at the top of the other page. I'll show you that here. Right here is the remainder of the specs for that older ATF. And then right here is the specifications for the low viscosity ATF for most of the newer transmissions. So this gives you uh, all the specifications for that fluid, and uh, it shows you significantly how much better that performs than the regular fluids out there. Uh, if you want to extend the life of your automatic transmission, this uh, chemical engineered synthetic signature series AMSOIL is the best way to do it. This is my fluidcapacity.com website. And when you come to the home page, there's the blue button here, Auto and Light Truck Fluid Lookup Guide. We're going to look up this 2018 Mercedes Benz Sprinter. So when this pops up, you type in 2018, hit the build list button. We'll go down to Mercedes-Benz and we'll scroll through to Sprinter 3500 and it's a V6 diesel engine and over here it'll give you all the fluids that AMSOIL recommends for each cavity. Um, got the engine oil here and also each uh, cavity will give you the uh, capacity of it and uh, on some of the drain plugs it'll give you the torque uh, specs for it as well. Gives you the oil filter, engine oil filter number and the wicks, uh, any air filters that are available, any fuel filters that are available, and also the antifreeze plus how much it holds. And it also gives you down here is the transmission fluid and on this five speed automatic, total fill 7.5 quarts and we will be using the signature series fuel efficient synthetic automatic transmission fluid in it. And it goes on further to give you the differential and uh, transfer case and uh, down lower it gives you some of the different products that we have power steering fluid brake fluid and other products to uh, help maintain your vehicle and for this information you can uh, if you want the fluid capacities you can go to the top of the page and you can uh, print it off right here the other thing that we have is the original mercedes-benz transmission filter and my source for these, you can get them at your Mercedes dealer. Um, I went online to uh, Auto House, Arizona, 
and that's where I picked up these. You can get uh, original equipment uh, parts for your Mercedes or they also have aftermarket. I chose the original equipment. And this here is the transmission pan gasket, the original Mercedes Benz, and we're going to be replacing that as well. Now this vehicle does not have a lot of miles on it, it's about 22,000 miles, but uh, it holds about 7.5 quarts total fill on this transmission. And the owner wanted the benefits of the uh, longer transmission fluid life, tra longer transmission life, and smoother shifting, so that's why we're doing that. Another thing that you're going to need to do this transmission fluid check is a dipstick. Now they put a dipstick tube in, but they don't give you a dipstick. So I'll have the number of this dipstick uh, in the details of my video. <clears throat> and one other thing, when you go to that dipstick tube on this Sprinter, it's in a very bad place. It's kind of down behind, <clears throat> excuse me, it's down back behind where the uh, alternator's at. And I took this off because there was really no decent way for me to get in there to shoot a picture of it. Now this lock is put on from the factory. You know, it's got a little tab on the top here. And you can't remove and check your transmission fluid without taking this locking mechanism off. Okay, so that little lock will be on top of it. And I'll show you the position of that dipstick tube here when we get started. But uh, what I used was you have to bust off that tab right there, and then that allows you to push down. <clears throat> There's a locking mechanism right there. You can see it coming down, and that allows you to take out that locking mechanism. And then there's a little tab in there. There's a ring, kind of an expanded ring around the outside of the, the filler tube where this goes. And there's a little notch right here at the end of my screwdriver on that plastic, and that's what kind of keeps it on there. Now this lock right here, <clears throat> what I end up doing is pushing that off, and you can get yourself another new lock like this if you need, if you want to. But if you want to recheck the fluid, this will go back on. That locking tab is still there. It's just that it's not permanently locked like it was from the factory. And there's also an O-ring on there as well, and that does the sealing to the tube. So you can still latch it on and be able to pull it back off again. With, uh, with this here, the tab removed and that, that piece pushed out. But I wanted to show you that and uh, hopefully you can see that good enough there in, in the video. But uh, we're going to get started with this. Uh, we're going to drain the transmission first and uh, get started pulling the pan down and changing the filter and, and we'll be back with you. This drain plug here is a 5 millimeter hex and when you put it in make sure you get it seated in all the way. And I had broke this loose here just a second ago. It was really, really tight. It snapped. I mean, it was really, really tight. So when you go to take that loose, be prepared because it can be a really tight one. And there is a copper washer on there. Make sure you retain that copper washer. Okay. Now I'm guessing this transmission fluid started out as a nice cherry red, but as you can see it's not all that cherry red anymore. It's starting to get a little dark. And again we're at about 22,000 miles on this fluid. The vehicle only has about 22,000 on it. So we're going to drain this out and then we have there are six bolts that we take out to take this pan off. And up front here there's a heat shield. Let's see if I can get a little light over there. Okay, there's a heat shield. Right here's your catalytic converter, so there's a lot of heat that you're dealing with there. And uh, they put a heat shield on there. And right up here in the corner is a uh, inverted Torx. And the size of that inverted Torx is an E10. So here's kind of a picture of that inverted Torx. But uh, that's what we're going to need to take that heat shield off in order to get that, that tranny pan off. Because that, that uh, chunk of steel that it's attached to is actually the clamping device to hold that, that pan to the bottom of the tranny. So the next step is we're going to take all these, uh, these six bolts off and we're going to drop that pan down to get it the uh, transmission filter inside. Okay, I've got all of these uh, T30 bolts loose all the way up here. I could get this uh, socket and ratchet on. This back one here in the passenger side, they got this cross member here. The German engineering wouldn't let them uh, make it so that we could get this straight shot on that and get it out. 
So, um, what I did is I have a T30, just a separate Torx 30 bit, and then I've got uh, a quarter inch short socket, and I'll slip right in there and put my quarter inch drive ratchet on, and that allows me to uh, to get up there close enough and be able to get that out. So. Just to let you know, that one's kind of interference fit. You're going to have to have something a little bit different to get that out. So we're going to go ahead and take all these off. And right up here on this front one, I don't know if we can see that very well, but I've got that pretty well loose in that, that uh, heat shield. We can pull it out now with that bolt out. And uh, just slide it out just enough so that we can get that piece out. And there's what we have holding the pan in. Right there, that little hook, hook piece there, you can kind of see it. So we're going to take the rest of these down, get the pan down, we'll be back with you. Okay, we've got all the bolts out, the transmission is drained. There's still going to be some fluid in the pan because I put the plug back in. And, let's see what we have to do to get this out of here. There we go. Oh. You're going to have to tip it back and you're going to lose some fluid there. So, there we got the pan out. And that filter, the filter's pretty straightforward, and just pull it straight down. And there's going to be some fluid coming out of that as well, so you're going to catch it. I'll just let it drain down there until it's about done. There. Next thing we'll do is we'll clean up this uh, gasket surface area, make sure it's all good and clean, and then we'll start putting up the, uh, the new transmission filter. Okay, we've got this pan out. You take that filter and put it in the drain. And what we're seeing here, you can see there's metal flakes in there in that uh, in that uh, oil. And you know a lot of that. Here's some back here. I'm guessing a lot of this here, little pieces of brass. I'm guessing that's from the original break-in. You know, like I said, we're only at 22,000 miles. But uh, this is the stuff I want to get out of that transmission system is, is this uh, fine metal. And right here is the magnet. And, you know, I'm seeing normal wear in that magnet. That's pretty much normal for the break-in. But uh, you see the metal that's on it. And uh, when you do a flush and you don't take that pan off, you're not doing yourself a lot of favors because that fine metal can get stirred up go through the rest of the tranny, cause problems in the valve body, hang up the valve body. And the uh, biggest thing is I just want to get this break-in oil out and get some oil in there that's got a much, much longer life. And that Amsoil will definitely do that. But you can, you can see these pieces down here. Some of them are about the size of probably about a pencil lead. And uh, especially right back here. Okay, so those are pieces that I want to, want to get out. And I'm going to clean this whole Thing up, clean the magnet. I'm going to clean the pan, and I typically will use either brake clean solvent or ether starting fluid to get everything clean and dry. And we're putting a new uh, new gasket on too. But I just wanted to show you what was in there, you know, for the metal flake. And I, I think that's for breaking. It's going to be normal. But what I want is to get it out of the system. So, like I say, there's 20,000 miles. You know, the break-in should be pretty well done at this point. And then uh, get that fluid out of there because it's kind of loaded up with that metal. You know, if you can see it, it's at least 40 microns. And most of your bearings, you know, the oil film is going to be in that, uh, you know, 5 micron, 4 micron range. It's a very thin film of oil. And those particles getting into those bearings will definitely cause some issues. There's a little piece of brass right there. But uh, again, I think those are just from the original break-in. So we'll get this all cleaned up and uh, go to the next step. Okay, we got the pan all cleaned up, magnets all cleaned up. I spray it with ether, then I take a blow gun, blow it all off, and get all that old metal off so it's ready to go again. And right there is a spot where it goes. And I got a brand new Mercedes-Benz gasket here, it's gonna go on. 
and it just kind of sits on that lip there. And there we go. So that's ready to go. And right here is the filter. And one thing I want you to note here on this filter is there's a tab right there. And I'll show you underneath there's actually a slot in that valve body where that tab goes. And it's got the o-ring on it already. If you want to put a little grease or oil on that you sure could. Or there's going to be drips of oil down there in a the tranny. You can put a drip of uh, tranny fluid on that's already there. And that will slip up in place really nice. So we're all ready to put that back in. And uh, next step we'll go underneath and do that. Okay, that slot I was talking about for the transmission is right there at the end of my finger, and that's where this uh, this little tab here goes into. And what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of this fluid that's up here, and I'm just going to put it on the on the O-ring so it slips into place really nice. And right there it is. Okay, so now we're ready for the pan, and we'll slide that into place. is and there's only one of these tabs that are holding that pan in that's different that's that one front one that I showed you earlier so the rest of them are all pretty much the same um, we're going to go ahead and put all these tabs on and then we'll torque them to a hundred inch pounds okay and then also we have the drain plug right here and I'm going to take that to about 20 foot pounds. That'd be this drain plug. So we're going to go ahead and put all these on, get that uh, torque down, and we'll be back with you. Okay, this is what I've done for that back bolt that I couldn't get on decent. Um, I got a, about a four inch three eighths drive extension for my torque wrench, and then I got a quarter, or a, a quarter by three eighths adapter. Then I'm going to a universal joint, and I've got that quarter inch drive, uh, quarter inch socket, and I'm putting my, my T30 in there. And that's what I'm going to use to get in there and torque that. Let's see what it is. Okay, and there it is. And that's something that if you put that together, you could probably use that to take it apart too. I just used a quarter inch drive ratchet on here and it worked fine. But, you know, if you want to use a three inch drive ratchet, you could. But that'll get that back one torqued up for you. And then also the, the front bolt up here, that inverted torque, so that's going to get the same torque as the rest of these, about 100 foot pounds. So we're going to put that one in next and then we'll be pretty much done down here. Okay, I'm going to show you where the dipstick tube is at. And I think earlier I mentioned it was behind the alternator, but it's not actually the alternator. It's, it's the uh, overflow tank for the antifreeze. And it's right down, it's right here is that cap that I'd uh, mentioned earlier. And that cap, it still latches on. You can kind of see there's a lip on the outside there. And on that lip there at the end of my finger is, is where that little uh, tab locks onto. Okay. So you can kind of hear it snap on, it snaps back off. So if you're going to check the fluid time and time again, um, you know, this here will work. You can buy another new tab if you want, but uh, this here will seal back down on that O-ring and uh, it'll, it'll snap over that, uh, that lip so it's reusable. So what I'm going to do to get a little bit more room, um, actually, yeah, I'm going to take out this, this bolt right here. It's a T30. And what that will do is give me a little bit more room to deal with around that uh, filler neck. So we'll pop that out and then we'll pick up on it here a little bit and there's a right over here is a little keeper for that hose for the overflow. Knock that loose there. It's going to give us a little bit more room to be able to get in there and you can use a funnel but my experience with these Mercedes uh, tubes they're so small they neck down so small that uh, if you're using a funnel, what it'll do is it'll start running up over the outside of that, uh, that lip right here and you'll make a mess. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I've got some three quarter inch heater hose. And this should work really well for filling it up. Make sure it's clean inside and 
you can just slip that right over it. And it's a nice snug fit. Now you can go ahead and put yourself a funnel in here and you don't have to worry about it uh, overflowing around that little bell end and making a mess all over your engine compartment. So we can put a, a, a funnel right in here and fill it up. And it's a small, it's a really small tube. I don't know if we can see it back here. But it, it necks down to probably about three-eighths of an inch. So it's going to take a little bit of time to get the fluid in. And total fill on this is seven and a half quarts. And I'm going to overfill it for the flush. I'm going to be doing a flush on this. And uh, so we're going to fill this up. And the overfill is not going to be an issue because we're not driving it. We're simply going to be flushing it through the system. Okay, so I want to have enough in there that I can get a nice color change coming out of the cooler when I get done with my flush. So I'm also going to show you um, if you want to just drain out the torque converter. Uh, Mercedes leaves a plug on the torque converter. I'm going to show you that process as well. So you can do it either way. You can, you can choose to do it with uh, draining out the, the uh, torque converter. Um, I've chose to go ahead and flush out the cooler as well because I want to get more of the fluid out. But I'm going to show you that procedure as far as flushing through the cooler. So we're going to get uh, the oil in and then uh, I'll show you the down below where that plug is at. Okay, now there's two ways of doing this transmission flush. Now, Mercedes-Benz, what they tell you to do is to take out the plug here in a torque converter. And right here where my fingers are at, there's a rubber plug. And that'll get you access. I just push that in and then pull it out. Okay, and that'll give you access to right here is your torque converter. <laughs> kind of hard to see right there where you're at, but I'll shoot it here in a minute. But you've got to rotate the engine over to get the plug to the bottom and it's a fairly tight fit in here and that'll get your torque converter drained out okay I'm gonna show you the procedure to get that around and get it where it needs to be and show you what the plug looks like but I'm not going to drain it out of the torque converter what I'm going to do is a flush uh, up there on the cooler line because I want to flush out the cooler as well and get that fluid out of the cooler so I'm going to go up front here and let's see if I can get a shot here of that torque converter. You can kind of see there's some numbers on it right there at the end of my finger. But that's the torque converter. Okay, and I'm going to go up front on the engine. And you can see right up here is, see what I can get in there. Okay, there we go. You can see the fan up here. Right here's your fan, the rotating assembly. And on the front here of this uh, crankshaft pulley, Right there where my light is at, there is a bolt that holds that on, and that's an inch and a sixteenth. So what I'm going to do is grab an inch and a sixteenth socket here. And this is probably going to be a two-person job. So what I have is a ratchet with a deep well inch and a sixteenth socket, and it'll fit right on there. And I'll try and do this one hand is kind of tough, but I'll try it. Okay, so there we're on, and what we're going to do is just turn that engine over slowly, and we'll have somebody looking in that little window back there where I pulled that rubber boot out, and uh, when that when that plug comes down, and you want to stop, and then you can have access to that plug. So uh, we'll get that around, and I'll show you what it looks like. But it's just a matter of turning the engine over, barring it over here with a, a long ratchet and and a socket, inch and a sixteenth. Okay, you can see right up here in the window, you can see that little plug, and it's a four millimeter head on it. So when you go to take it out, it's kind of a snug little fit getting in there. And uh, like I said, I'm not going to take it out because I'm going to do a flush, which is going to flush the torque converter anyway. If you don't want to do the flush the way I do it, then you can drain out the torque converter right here by uh, doing what, what, you know, taking out this plug right here. And then getting the plug back in, I don't know how easy that's going to be to get your fingers up in there and, and get it started and all that. Um, I'm sure it's doable. But uh, I just wanted to show you that. So if you want to do it this way, you certainly could. And that will get your torque converter drained out. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and show you how I'm going to do the flush up above on the, on the radiator on the transmission cooler line. Okay, I've put in five quarts of uh, Amsoil ATL in here and I did not spill a drop that three-quarter inch heater hose fits really nice on that bell end and seals it up good I actually use pressure on here and pressurize it push it in but um, that worked really well for filling it and uh, so I'm starting I, I took out four quarts when I drained it 
and I put five quarts in to do this flush. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, there's transmission cooler line that goes into the radiator, and it's right here. And there's a, a keeper, a little white keeper, and that has to be popped off. You can take a screwdriver and pop that off. And then there's a little clip in there. And that clip is what holds that line in. And I'm using a, a corkscrew o-ring pick to get that out. They make tools for it, but it's so tight in here, you can't get the tool in to maneuver it to get that loose. So what I'm going to do is remove that little clip. There it is right there. Okay, there's the clip. Okay, so put that somewhere safe because we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to put that on here when we get that uh, tube off. Okay, so... The next thing we do is uh, I'm going to grab a, a paper towel and I'm going to put it under there in case there's any fluid that wants to come out of that cooler and then we'll wiggle it off. Right there it is. Okay. Now the flow comes in the bottom. Right down here is the, the inlet. If you can see it right here at the end of my finger. Okay, that's the inlet. It comes into the radiator, comes up through the cooler and then it comes out and this is the return line back to the transmission. So what we're doing is we're capturing that fluid. There's no flow through this hose here. That's just going pushing back. So the flow is going to be coming out of the cooler itself. So the snout right here is 3 8 inch. So if you have some 3 8 inch poly tubing, there's an O-ring in there. And you can push that poly tubing right on there. And it'll seal in that O-ring. And then we can take it out to a drain pan to do our flush. So we're going to get that all set up. And I'll show you that. So we'll take that tubing and push it right in. Wiggle it a little bit and there it went. You kind of heard it. Okay. So now we'll take this here out to a drain pan. So the next step we're going to do is get somebody in the driver's seat and uh, we're going to start it up and we'll shift through the gears and the fluid will be coming out of here and we'll go till we get a nice color change. So we're going get, to uh, get that all set up and we'll be back with you. Okay, here's our poly hose. We've got our 3 8 poly hose. We've got a nice clean pan here so we can see a color change when it comes. And again, I put in five quarts of brand new Amsoil ATL fluid. This is the signature series. And we're going to start it up. And when she starts it up, she's going to go through the gears. We're going to leave it in reverse for about three seconds. And we're going to go to drive for about three seconds and then back to park again. So go ahead and start it. If you've got an older vehicle and the fluid is really nasty, you might have to do this process twice to make it come clean. And also, if you start noticing the air bubbles spitting out of here, it means you're sucking down to the bottom of the tranny pan and you got to shut it off. So right there we're starting to do it. Shut it off. Okay. Let's see what this stuff here looks like. Okay. I think right there we're looking pretty good. It's a little bit uh, aerated, but let's see what that fluid looks like. It's a nice, uh, kind of a nice cherry red now. That gets the uh, cooler flush, and that gets the torque converter flushed as well. So we're going to stop there. And I'm going to show you the procedure for hooking up the lines, and then we'll uh, recheck the fluid. Okay, right here is some of the brand new fluid, <clears throat> and there's the fluid we're taking out. So it gives you a comparison of the colors there. And like I say, we got about 22,000 miles on this fluid right there. Okay, this is the same type of transmission cooler lines on this vehicle. I wanted to do this out here because it's so hard to, to tape it in there. Uh, everything's tight. Okay, so again, here's that little clip. And you can see there's, there's a leg on each side. And a lot of times you can just get a hold of that leg. And you can get one side popped up. And you got to get a finger on it or something, and there's your clip. And what holds in this, this line are these, these uh, spots right here, these dimples. There's three dimples. And those dimples, what happens is uh, they 
are in these slots right here. Slot here, slot here, and a slot here. Okay? So when you go back together, you'll take this uh, clip and you got to bridge with those two legs one of those slots. You can't go in the slot, it's, gonna, it's not going to work. Okay? You got to bridge the slot and then just push it on. Just like that. And once it's in there, on all three of those, you'll see you can bounce it around a little bit and you can kind of see the, the humps in there that hold the line in place. And the way it works, there's an O-ring in there as well. And that's what seals right here in the snout of this tube. And then there's a ramp right here. You can see this ramp. Okay, that ramp is there for a quick connect. And those, those three uh, bumps there will go up over that ramp and then they snap on the back side. And that's what holds your line in. So we'll just do a simple push like that. You can hear it click. Give it a tug. Make sure it's tight. And then your little keeper here goes back over that snap ring. And that's it. I want to do this here because it's really hard to see in there. We're going to try and tape it, but if not, this will give you something to reference. Okay, now there's a slot directly on the bottom on this one. So I'm going to come up from the bottom and uh, bridge it and get that clip back in. There it goes. Okay. Right there, it's in where it needs to be. And I'll pull my little line back out here. It kind of snapped in beside the radiator. There it is. And push it in. Give it a tug. Make sure it's tight. Then bring your keeper up and cover up your snap ring. And then the next thing will be to uh, we'll put our cooler kind of back in place here. Or our uh, coolant overflow, I should say. And uh, we'll put our bolt in. Get that snugged up. And then I'm going to check the level of fluid. I know I'm going to have to add some. So I'm going to show the procedure for checking the fluid uh, again here. So we'll be back with you. Okay, there's two level checks. This is done cold at 25 degrees Celsius, which is 77 degrees Fahrenheit. And when it's hot, they want it at 80 degrees Celsius, which is 175 degrees Fahrenheit. So those are the two different levels where you check it at and temperatures where you check it at. And what I use... Uh, you can use a uh, temp gun like this. You can pick these up for you know 30, 40 bucks. They work pretty good. And you can shoot, shoot the temperature off the bottom of that transmission pan, and that'll get you right in the ballpark where you need to be for checking this level. Um, what I use is a, a thermal imaging camera. It's, it's uh, very accurate, but uh, most of you aren't going to be having access to that. So these here will work really well for checking your your transmission temp. And I'm going to show you how this dipstick works in there. Um, there's several goosenecks in there, so if you do this directly after you fill it up, you have uh, there's some horizontal runs on that tube, and it's going to mess with your uh, your readings. So you got to put it in, and that dipstick will go in just about all the way. And the last part of it, you're going to have to push because it's going through another gooseneck right there at the top of the tranny. But you go till it stops, and Okay, you can feel it come to a, to a stop. Right there it is. So it's hitting the bottom of the tranny pan. And then you go ahead and pull it out. And our fluid level looks to be right in this general area. About the end of my thumb. So we're close to having enough in to start it. And uh, that's where we want it to be is right in that area cold with the engine off. Okay, so the next thing is we're going to start it up and we're going to see where it's at cold running. We want it in between these two lines. So I'm going to start it up and we'll check that. It's looking like we need a little bit in there yet. I can see some empty spots kind of in between there so I think we're going to add just a little bit yet. So we'll put our three quarter inch hose on and I'm going to put in probably about a half a quart. I'm going to try that and see what it looks like. Because I put in two quarts after we did the uh, flush. And when we did that flush, we were pumping down to the bottom of the pan. You can see it spurting out. So we're, we're going to be right at about seven and a half quarts uh, when I add some here. Okay, we let this sit for about a half an hour to allow that fluid that's in that tube to get all the way back down to the transmission. And uh, I'm going to show you where we're at to start with. OK, 
Okay, looks like you're right here, basically right at the top of that uh, that high mark right there. That's right where we're at. So it's really close to where we need to be, really close to where I started at before I did anything to the truck. So we're going to start it up, and when we start it up, we should be probably about right here. We'll do that and be back with you. Okay, when you check this fluid level, I didn't say it before, but uh, make sure the vehicle is level. And we have uh, used seven and a half quarts of fluid. And that's basically what that transmission holds, seven and a half quarts. So we'll check it here and see where we're at. And this is a cold check. So we are right there, really close to the top of that uh, full mark. I mean, it's, it's so close, I think I'm just gonna leave it right there. And uh, if you want to, you can uh, get it up to temperature and recheck it again. And uh, with it up to temp, it should be between these two marks right here. So seven and a half quarts. Uh, I'd have about eight on hand to do this transmission flush. But uh, that goes through and gives you the procedure. Thank you for watching my video. Be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel at youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Donswell. I'd like to introduce you to Amsoil Synthetic Lubricants. We have the most complete line of synthetic lubricants on the market that offer you greatly reduced wear, extended drain intervals, longer equipment life. You can check that out at my website, donsoil.com. I also have a website for looking up fluid capacities. It's fluidcapacity.com. You can go there and print off the capacity of your engine oil, cooling system, transmission, transfer case differentials. Be sure to like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Don Synthetic Lubes. Thank you and have a great day.